Hey everyone, today we will learn how to build this Python program that plots and measures the GPU power usage in real time. It runs in one single Python script as easy as this. And to demonstrate it, we can do something like this, where we will start a, uh, another Python script that will um, do some tr uh, training on GPU. And you can see as soon as it starts, the GPU power usage massively increases because it starts to load data for training a neural network onto the GPU. And then as when we quit this program, you see it just started training here. If we quit this program, it will go down rather quickly. So now let's get into the code. For our program, we only need these five imports. PyNVML is a package that allows us to interface with our NVIDIA GPU, and this is what we use to measure the power uh, at, at that GPU. Then, of course, we need matplotlib for plotting. We use this um, built-in time module that allows us to measure the time. Then we need NumPy for numerical stuff. And finally, most importantly, we need async IO because we will need to concurrently measure at a certain time interval. And while we're not measuring, we want to also plot at a certain time interval. So this part of the code is just setting up. We uh, initialize our interface to the GPU sensors. We get the handle for it and we just define some numbers that tell us, okay, we want to measure every 100 milliseconds. We want to plot every 200 milliseconds. You can of course easily change these. You can find the link to the code in the description. We uh, want to uh, roughly define a time span that we have on the X axis of our plot and then we define the um, arrays that will hold the data that we are measuring. I actually just realized that this is redundant and I don't need this because I define it here already on this line. So we want uh, initially an array that has just uh, NAN, so not a number because we didn't measure anything yet. So initially both the uh, measurement and the time array will just contain nons and we want them to contain this many nons which roughly corresponds to um, of course, slightly drifting with the um, the time interval, um, roughly around 20 seconds. And then we just define a constant that allows us to convert the milliwatts that are measured by uh, pi and VLML to uh, watt. Then we initialize our plot and um, yeah, this is just initializing the figure, initializing the line plot. This uh, line is very important is um, puts matplotlib into interactive mode and this is important for the figure to show up properly we label our x and our y axes and now we get into the meat of it where this is the um, these are probably the most uh, the two most important parts of the code because these are the um, the coroutines that we use to measure and to plot the data and these are different from normal functions and they are different because we use this async keyword here at, at uh, before them and the async keyword has been introduced in um, python 3.5 before uh, python 3.5 we would have uh, needed to add a decorator um, that we would import from the async io library and what this async keyword does is it allows us to use the await keyword within that function, which essentially idles the routine. So because we call async io .sleep, we put it to sleep for this long. So we put it to sleep in our case for 100 milliseconds uh, after we have done the measurements. And the measurements we do simply by calling the pi nvml library then we um, measure the time because we want to keep track of the time, of course, to make sure that um, there's no major issues with the function being too slow. So we want to make sure that it is actually roughly measured every 100 milliseconds. And we should know the timing between because if you want to do things like calculate the energy usage, energy usage is the power uh, in a period of time. So we need to keep track of the time 
And what we do then is we have this measurement array, which is initially just uh, nonce. We shift all the values that are currently in there, one to the left with this, and then all the way on the right, so the last value, we now put the value we just measured. So with the, and we do the same thing with the time array. So the, exactly the same thing happened here, but we put the difference between time.time dot time is the current time and TS is a timestamp we initialize down here actually in the in this part of our code. So this is the measuring part of our code. The plotting part of our code, oh, and I forgot actually, because we do we want to do this periodically, we of course wrap this in an infinite loop that just keeps doing this. So it measures, goes to sleep, then goes back to the while loop, measures, goes to sleep, and so on and so forth. So this only terminates when either the event loop that we will put these coroutines into, more on that later, um, or when the script entirely is terminated by someone using, for example, control C or something like that. Other than that, it would keep running um, indefinitely. So the plotting part works almost identically. We, it's a coroutine, so we make it, um, we use this async keyword. And now we just do the plotting and we go to sleep. So very simple. Now though, coroutines are different from functions in that we don't just call coroutines to do the work, but we need to embed these coroutines into what is called an event loop that we get from the async IO um, package. And this is something we set up here where we define this main function where we put both of our um, functions and we convert them to tasks and this makes them dispatchable to the event loop. So we await both of those, both of those tasks are awaited by this, by this main function. And then in this main part here, this is only executed if we run this as a script. That's why we have this if statement here. We set up this timer, this timestamp, and then we create a new async IO event loop and we dispatch the coroutines to that event loop by calling run until complete uh, on this main function. And run until complete, of course, in this case means it will run indefinitely because it will never complete because there's infinite loops in there. So we need to quit that program. This program will run indefinitely unless we uh, terminate it. Uh, from the outside. And we can see that this program is still running. Uh, it has been running the whole time I talked. Uh, so it just keeps going. Um, it even keeps going if we close this plot. And you can see it's still going here. So to terminate it, we have to do control C and then the program has quit. So with that, uh, we're done. I hope this has been interesting for you and I will see you in the next video. Let me know if you have any questions.